Hi, I'm Nash Lin, and thank you for watching ilearntoanimate.com. Moving on from here, we are going to try to complete this whole animation by having more bounce for this basketball. And in order to do that, we got to create more keyframes definitely. So what I'm going to do is at frame 20, you can see that um, at frame 1 to frame 10 goes down. Frame 10 to frame 20, it goes back up. And let's take it that I'm going to be at frame 30. I'm going to pull this down and make it faster. I just press put in the value 5, enter. Okay, and the graph view looks like this. Okay, now I'm going to share with you the second principle that I'm going to apply here, which is timing. Timing is very important when it comes to animation. Logically, let's think when a ball loses energy, it bounces up at a lower distance, which means the time taken to reach the lower distance should be shorter, right? So, at frame 20, this, this particular keyframe at frame 20 should be even shorter compared to the first duration when I when a ball drops down. From 1 to 10, there's 9 keyframes. From 10 to 20, there is about 10 keyframes, which is more than the previous keyframe, and that is not logical at all. That's not realistic. Okay, so let's try to shift this frame 20 keyframe to a little bit shorter, maybe by just one or two keyframes. And how do we do that? We can let hold down shift, put our mouse on a frame 20 keyframe and select left click to select this. You can see that the whole frame 20 is being selected and we can actually drag this backwards. I'm going to put it at frame 18 so that it is um, taking a shorter time to reach a shorter distance, which makes sense. So same to the next keyframe, I'm going to hold on shift again and left click and to highlight this keyframe and bring it backwards to from 18 to 26. Okay, so now my keyframe is the duration from first keyframe to the second keyframe is 9. From the second keyframe to the third keyframe is 8. And from third keyframe to fourth keyframe, it will be also 8. Well, um, I'll choose to put it at 8 for now. Okay, and we will just try to edit this this handle. Okay, so same thing, select this handle. Uh, I will need to actually break this apart by using the break tangent. Okay, and put, uh, make sure that I have my free tangent weight and pull it up here. Okay, so this is what, what I will have. Okay, let's play back. Okay. okay, so we will continue to do this until we try to end this whole uh, bouncing of the uh, basketball. Okay, by reducing the time, reducing the height, and again, reduce the time, reduce the height until it comes to a standstill on the floor. Okay, so if you can, do it on your own. If not, you can see how I do it, how the graph looks like when the whole animation is up. Okay, so I'm going to complete the rest um, just to assist you in case you are doing it on your own. You want to try to challenge it. You will definitely need to have a longer timeline. So all you need to do is use the second box over here. This second box means the total animation timing. And we can actually increase to 300 
just to be safe and you can actually use this to scrub if you wish if you if you would like to see further on and same thing alternate um, what I normally do is I will try to make all the keyframe first before I edit anything in the graph editor so I'll just off the graph editor for now and start animating Just a side note, um, once I'm reaching to the end, I usually try to make it a little bit more subtle, but there's still movement. Because 3D animations are very very precise and the moment it is a total standstill, that means the object is dead or not alive. So I would try to have a very very subtle lingering of animation even when it's almost to the end. And almost like one keyframe um, just to make sure that it, it bounces right at the end okay let me just adjust it so I can see how it looks like for now of course you can choose to let it linger a bit longer if you wish to but this is roughly how it will be like 